Hi, everyone. Um, so today we're going to build an options uh, leaderboard, a volume leaderboard for Thinkorswim with um, SPX, SPY, Qs, IWM, or your favorite ticker. I'm going to show you how to do it on SPX, uh, but of course this translates to uh, any ticker of your choosing. Uh, and before we begin, I just want to remind you that this presentation is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And uh, if you use this leaderboard for trading, uh, any choices you make using leaderboard and any data that's provided by the leaderboard uh, is for your, um, your use, but uh, any choices that you make off of it are your choices and your choices alone. All right, that being said, let's jump into it. Uh, I know some of you guys are having issues with the links that I posted, uh, so I just wanted to make a quick video on how to build these scanners. I think it might be useful to understand a little bit of the inner plumbing behind how the scanner works. These are pretty simple scanners. Um, you can, of course, go crazy with them, uh, but I thought it might be beneficial for you guys to learn how to do this uh, instead of just grabbing the links. Also, if you have to troubleshoot anything, it'll make it easier for you to troubleshoot. And I think you'll see that the, there's a lot of power behind uh, Thinkorswim and the scanning capabilities. And uh, you know, you might find it uh, fun to start to play around with some of these things. All right, so the, the goal here today is uh, we're gonna build an SPX zero DTE volume leaderboard. Uh, this is what I've been using now for a couple weeks um, to uh, find interesting contracts during the day at support and resistance. Uh, to potentially take for a small move uh, to the upside or the downside. And um, this methodology will work for SPX, 0DT, SPY, 0DT, uh, uh, Qs, IWM. Uh, you can change it to be weeklies. You can change it to be, um, you know, uh, 30, you know, 0 to 30 uh, day expiration. You can do it for, you know, 0 to 90, 0 to 180, whatever you want to do. If you want to do, you know, uh, a full year, you can definitely do that. Uh, to see what contracts are hot, um, but uh, you know I'm I'm using it primarily for uh, scalping and day trading right now. Um, but of course, there's uh, a whole uh, you know plethora of options, no pun intended, uh, to build out um, you know options scanners in here. Uh, but this is going to be pretty basic, and and hopefully you guys will find it uh, illuminating and helpful. And, uh, you know, you can start on your journey of uh, going down uh, the, the rabbit hole of, of uh, creating scanners. All right, let's start with, um, <clears throat> so for these scanners, you're going to need uh, something to scan in, right? And we want to limit the scan to just uh, SPX. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's create a slot that we're going to put our leaderboard in. So if you go down here to the bottom and you could click the plus button, we're going to create a watch list and uh, it's going to go to your default. What you want to do here is you want to create a watch list. So we're going to select the pull down menu, click create watch list, and let's create a watch list. So this is going to be the input watch list. You can, what, you know, whatever stocks you want to have in there. I like to keep them separate. You know, you of course can put all of them together if you're okay with doing that. I like to have them, you know, uh, individual uh, leaderboards, you know, for SPX, for SPY, for IWM for Qs, uh, you know, Apple, Tesla, whatever you want to do. Um, I think having individual leaderboards can keep focus. You know, right now, primarily I'm day trading SPX and SPY. So um, we're going to call this watch list SPX, and this is going to be our input watch list. And then we're going to create just one symbol in here, and that's going to be SPX. All right, we can hit enter. You can see the index is there. And then we're just going to save that. And you can see now we're populated with just a SPX watch list, right? And that just has SPX. So this is going to be our input watch list. And what we're going to do is now you're going to go over and click the scan button. Sorry, the scan tab. And then we want to go over to Option Hacker. So Stock Hackers, if you want to do stock, you know, we've done in the past, we've done a uh, squeeze scanner. Uh, that was through the, the Stock Hacker. Now we're going to shift over to the Options Hacker. Okay. And, uh, you know, typically I have a core list I like to scan, scan against for most of my scans. Uh, that kind of limits where my scans go. Uh, and it's like a core list of indexes, uh, uh, um, you know, the uh, uh, sector ETFs, uh, and about 50 or so stocks that I like to track on a regular basis. Um, but for this scan, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our personal and we're going to click SPX. Okay, and uh, you want to uh, clear this filter of all optionable, right? And what we want to do is we want to eliminate the delta. We're going to keep days to expiration, 
And what we want to do is set this to max. So uh, set this to zero, set the max to zero. So this is just going to ensure that we have uh, zero DTE contracts only, right? Now, what we want to do is make sure that we don't show any contracts with zero volume. So in order for this to work, we want to have some volume on the contract. That'll limit what's in the list uh, so that we're not having to go. You, of course, can leave it uh, this way, but uh, I like it uh, if we, we just limit it to you know anything above zero volume. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a options filter, and then you're going to click the down arrow on the uh, pull down and uh, select volume, right? And we want to have a minimum volume of zero. All right, and so now it's already showing us 777 matches. And if we hit scan, actually, let's wait, let's uh, adjust this. So we want to uh, sort it by volume. And we want to sort it descending. Okay. Now, if you scan it, you've got a watch list of um, uh, uh, tickers uh, that are. And you can see they're active right now. This is the morning, uh, so you can kind of see what's going on. And um, you know, if you wanted to do something overnight, like if you're trading IBKR, then you would need to add a second uh, scanner, which is zero to one expiration, uh, zero to one day uh, expiration. And that would uh, help you overnight if you wanted to look at uh, contracts that were zero DT, but overnight contracts. All right, so that's it. That is all we need to do. Now we go up to the second little pull down here and we're gonna save our scan query. We're gonna call it SPX leaderboard. And we're gonna save that. And now if we go back to, now it's just cleared. This is a bug I think in Thinkorswim, so you can reload it if you want, um, you know, no big deal. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our watch list. So here we have our SPX watch list that's just SPX. That's not super useful for us. And we're going to go back to personal and we are going to select SPX leaderboard. And boom, you now have a leaderboard watch list. Now we can adjust these columns to make it a little cleaner. And you know some of this stuff that we, we don't actually need, the bid ask is super useful, but we kind of want to see the volume and we want to see the open interest. Uh, and maybe you want to see some other things. Some people have mentioned on Twitter, relative volume. There's a whole bunch of stuff. You can go to town on it. But here's the set that I like to do. So if you, there's this tiny little gear icon here. If you click that, click customize, uh, it'll bring up this little guy. And what we want to do is get rid of the net change. Uh, I use mark instead of last. Uh, you can use either or you can use both. Uh, and then we're going to go click in here, look up column. And let's type in volume and double click that, that'll put that in here, slide that up. And let's look for open interest. And we'll drag that up. So now we've got, and then let's do the mark as well. All right, and there you go. So now you've got your symbol, you've got volume, open interest, your mark, which is, uh, uh, and your bid and ask. Uh, mark is usually gonna be at the bid. So that can be kind of helpful when you're trying to monitor the premiums as they are at support and resistance. Of course, you can look at the bid ask and the spread as well. So we're going to click OK, and boom, we've got this jumbled up mess here. Uh, you know, I like to give volume a little more space. I got the OI a little more space, and then a mark bid and ask and kind of all be even. And there you go. There you've got your leaderboard. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you can, of course, change it to be SPY, you can change it to be Qs, you can change it to be um, uh, IWM. So let's do IWM real quick. So SPX, Qs, and SPY, zero DT are all going to be basically the same. You go through the same process. The only difference is you're going to create the SPY watch list or the Qs watch list. But let's say we want to create a IWM one. Well, IWM doesn't have zero DT every day. So if you're trying to do short-term expirations for that, you actually need to set it to be zero to one, right? Zero to one days expiration, and you would scan in your IWM, uh, um, IWM list. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's uh, how to create a, a SPX leaderboard. You can use it for <clears throat> other stocks if you want to. And um, I know people have asked about how uh, how I use it. Um, that'll have to come in a follow-up video, but the general idea is I'm looking for how volume is increasing at support and resistance and how the premiums are reacting at support and resistance. I posted a tweet um, a couple days ago with uh, some notes on that, and of course I'll expand on that on a, on a future video. Uh, but I hope this has been helpful, and I hope you guys are able to 
uh, load up the leaderboard and start to observe it and um, start to see how volume um, you know works uh, when you're at support and resistance. I think if you spend some time observing it and, and just watching what happens, um, you might start to see some patterns. Uh, but of course, we'll get uh, deeper into it in a subsequent video. All right, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Feel free to drop uh, some comments uh, if you have any questions for me. Um, or, uh, you know, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you, if you want uh, future uh, content. Um, and uh, I'll see you around. Bye.